As a podcaster, I recently interviewed a woman called Maya, whose dad had bred her solely for the purpose of molesting her. This went on from age four for over a decade. She met a man and she escaped from that household. When she was with her husband, she got a call from Essex police and they said, we know everything. She said, how do you know everything? How can you possibly know? And aren't you too late? And the reason they had found out was because her dad and his wife were on holiday in France. A relative had gone to the house to tidy up and saw a videotape. They put the videotape in, pressed play, and it was a video of the dad sexually assaulting Maya when she was a teenager. The police waited until the dad returned from France and arrested him. And he sent a letter to Maya, which the police intercepted. In that letter, it said, go in the back garden to the shed and destroy everything in the black box in the shed. The cops went to the house. They found the black box. They opened it and the first cop starts reading through it and he threw up. In that black box was a diary of every single molestation, rating them and specifying what date rape drugs he had used. The police also found a control room, a shrine in the house dedicated to what he had done to his daughter. In this control room was access to all the cameras and microphones he had put throughout this house and hours and hours of videotaped footage of what he had done to his daughter. At the sentencing hearing, the judge said, you are one of the most evil people to ever step foot in my courtroom. You deserve a life sentence. But because of the sentencing laws, all he could give the predator was a maximum of 10 years of which he had to serve 50%. He'd already done two unsentenced, so he's gonna get out after three years after completely putting his daughter through this torture of over a decade and doing things that could have potentially have destroyed her life, her ability to live like a normal person, her childhood stolen. The dad knew he was gonna get out after so many years and he sent a letter to the judge mocking the entire process. As a YouTuber and a podcaster, interviewing hundreds of true crime guests, perpetrators, victims, ex-cops, ex-prison guards, journalists, all these interviews have transformed my worldview and helped me establish a mission. My mission is to end the war on drugs, and take all of those resources and go after the predators and the paedophiles. I learned the truth about the war on drugs while I was incarcerated in Arizona. As a young person, I got interested in the stock market. I moved to Arizona from Cheshire, UK, and ended up making a couple of million in the stock market. The money went to my head. I was throwing rave parties for up to 10,000 people at a time. And I started to import ecstasy. I take full responsibility for breaking the law. I deserve my punishment. And I spent almost six years in the Arizona State Penitentiary System. Before I got arrested, I thought that a heroin user 
An addict was somebody who lived under a bridge, went out stealing all day, lock them up and throw away the key. But spending six years in a state prison system where the vast majority of the prisoners were addicted to injecting heroin was the greatest education in the psychology of addiction I could ever have experienced. At one point I had a cellmate who was using heroin and I asked him how many people in this building are injecting heroin and he, he pointed out each every single cell 90% of the prisoners were injecting drugs. So I thought prisons were for serial killers, murderers, rapists. I had no idea that to fill these private prisons the authorities had gone out and arrested the lowest hanging fruit. People with addiction issues. More than half of my friends in prison were soldiers who'd come back from wars with PTSD, didn't get any help, got on street drugs and ended up in prison. I learned that prison was the biggest house of the mentally ill and about a third of them couldn't even read or write. Thinking, what is going on in the world? Why am I seeing young people we have a little bit of weed, get two to five year sentences because they've got prior convictions. I quickly learned that the prisons got $60,000 per prisoner per year. So to fill these private prisons and the contracts are in the billions of dollars now annually, the easiest people to arrest were people taking drugs not the traffickers look how much money it cost to go after someone like pablo escobar millions arresting people for weed possession became the highest arrest category at the peak of the war on drugs over half a million arrests a year yet we are being told in the uk that the police don't have the resources to go after paedophiles and predators. And why is that? Because their resources are tied up in this insane war on drugs. You've got $2 trillion has been spent in America now fighting a war on drugs, yet drugs are more widely available than ever before in the history of the world and stronger to look at the fentanyl the damage that's being caused there. Drug laws made worthless plants more valuable than gold. I've written numerous books about Pablo Escobar. He could source coca paste out of Peru or Bolivia for $60 a kilo. This, he was getting started in the 1970s. A kilo of coke back then was going for $60,000 on the streets doesn't matter who we arrest escobar the cali cartel el chapo when you make a near worthless plant more valuable than gold because of drug laws someone's always going to come in to arbitrage that profit opportunity so we are campaigning for the war on drugs to be ended and drugs the drug market to be handed over to the government in a restricted environment and sequestered from young people. We want more education for young people and less incarceration. I am a member of LEAP, used to be called Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. And LEAP are mostly ex-cops, prosecutors, judges, campaigning to end this war on drugs. Leap cops say things like, I joined the police to go after the predators, the murderers, the rapists, and I was assigned to infiltrate a student group, get them all smoking weed, and arrest them at the end of the month to make my quotas. This is not the purpose of the police, Leap officers say. W prisons were designed to house people harming other people. If you go back millennia, that is how crime has been defined. Person A harms person B. Murder, 
robbery, rape. There's a person A and a person B. When you arrest a kid for weed possession, who is that kid hurting at the most themselves? Maybe it's a cry for help or they need some kind of mentorship. The prison systems are now completely full of low-level drug users. This is how they maximise their profits. A young person comes to prison arrested for weed. And what happens? They end up on hard drugs, joining neo-Nazi gangs like the Aryan Brotherhood, getting tattoos like swastikas, SS lightning bolts, criminal records. How on earth are they going to possibly get a job? I saw people get out of the prison system heavily addicted to the hardest core drugs and they had formed these addictions while in prison. They give them $50 at the gate when they're getting freed and they say have a nice day. They spend that money right away and then they start thieving and robbing to get the drugs to get high again from these addictions they formed inside. This is an absolute disaster for the taxpayers because these people just come right back They've made their criminal connections in prison, their characters inside, out on the streets, they're shorned by society. So what we have to do is address the root causes of why people are getting involved in drugs in the first place. Instead of just locking people up, most of the people in prison I had learned had suffered some kind of childhood trauma. Sexual abuse, physical abuse, seen parents, get murdered, being thrown away by their parents and raised on the streets. When a kid suffers childhood trauma and is not given the tools to deal with it, it creates mental turmoil. And as they get older, they fall back on self-medicating through drugs to get away from that pain, to finance their drug addictions, which become heavier and heavier over time. There is a trajectory I see over and over again by interviewing these people on my podcast. If you're a man, you steal to finance your drugs or you deal drugs yourself. If you're a woman, you usually get into sex work. And then as these people get older and older and they're criminals, they just end up in and out of the system for the rest of their lives. If the police resources were going after the predators and the predators were getting life sentences instead of slaps on the wrist, then there would be some actual deterrent from these predators committing these heinous crimes. There will be less victims of child abuse, less people getting involved in drugs to deal with that trauma and less fodder for these prison systems that are just thriving from the most vulnerable people in society. Again, this is why my mission is end the war on drugs, take all of those resources to go after the predators, less incarceration for young people and more education. And it was by going through that experience of incarceration and then interviewing people with all kinds of crime stories my worldview has been completely transformed. And once enough people in the public are aware of what's really going on with these predatory corporations profiting from the back of human suffering, I thoroughly believe and pray that changes will be made.